people from long ago are able to predict certain things. It's, uh, and it's almost like from long ago, and you've talked about this with, uh, with, with uh, uh, Pythagoras, uh, that it seems that they they had a deep sense of truth mm -hmm. That's that sort right. of permeates all of this, even even now. So it's right. not just a, a linear trajectory of an expanding knowledge. Right. There's a deep truth that permeates the whole thing. Yes, so that's how I see it. Actually, I, you know, I gave a talk about Pythagoras and Pythagoreans just a few weeks ago at the Commonwealth Club of California in San Francisco. And because of that, I did a kind of a deep dive into the subject. And I, 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 I learned that I actually totally misunderstood Pythagoras and Pythagoreans, mm -hmm. that they were much deeper than I thought. Because, you know, most of us remember Pythagoras from the, from the Pythagoras theorem about the right triangles. We also know that Pythagoreans were instrumental in introducing uh, the tuning system uh, for the musical scale, the, the, the famous um, perfect fifth, mm -hmm. three halves of the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the G, for the soul, uh, uh, compared to the frequency of, of Do or C, you know. And so, but actually they were much more interesting. So for them, numbers were not just clerical devices. You know, that not the kind of thing that you would use in accounting only. They were imbued with, with the divine. And I cannot, I cannot say that I, I think we lost it. At least I have lost it. I, I look at numbers and I don't really see that. The divine. The divine. That they clearly did. And so that, why else, you know, how else would you explain? So that in, in other words, divine is, of course, is a term which is, you know, it's a bit loaded. So it's hard to escape that. Let's just say something that more from the world of imagination and intuition than from the world of knowledge. Let's just put it this way. They were able to divine, okay, strike that, to intuit, <laughs> <laughs> to intuit yeah. that the, the planets were not revolving, and the sun and the planets were not revolving around the earth. They were the first ones, at least in the Western culture, as far as I know. And in fact, Copernicus, gave credit to Pythagoreans as being his predecessors. Uh, they did not quite have the, the Copernicus model with the sun in the middle. They had what they called the central fire in the middle. <laughs> and all the planets and the sun were revolving around, oh. around the central fire or hearth, they called it hearth. So, but still, what a departure from the dogma, from the knowledge mm -hmm. of the era that the earth was the, at the center. So how could they come up with this idea? The reason was, in my opinion, that for them, the, the mo mo movement of celestial bodies was like music. Mm -hmm. In fact, we call it music universalis or music of the spheres. For them, the universe was this infinite symphony in which every being, you know, humans, animals, but as well as the earth and other celestial bodies, were moving in harmony, like different notes of different instruments in a symphony. And so they applied the same reasoning to the, you know, the cosmological model as they applied to the, their model of music. And from that perspective, they could see things deeper than their contemporaries, you see. So in other words, they saw mathematics as a tool, but, that tool was not limited to itself. In other words, they, they, always, they always knew that there is more. And, mm -hmm. and they knew also that every, every pattern that you detect is finite, but the world is infinite. They actually accepted infinity. They believed that infinity is real. And if you discern a pattern, great. You can play with it and you can use that. It gives you a certain lens through which to see um, the world in a particular way, which could be beneficial for you to, to learn more and so on. But they never had the illusion that that was the final word, that they always knew that it, it's not the whole thing. So there is more. There are more sophisticated patterns that could be discovered using mathematics or otherwise. And I think that what happened was that we kind of lost this, this other side of their teachings. 
with, we, ran, we took their numbers and they mm -hmm. were like, idea that you could use mathematics to discern patterns mm -hmm. and to find regularities and to explain things about the world. We took that and we ran with it. And we kind of dropped the other idea that in fact, there is, a, there is another side to it, which is kind of, to us now, we say, oh, that's mystical. <laughs> but what does it mean mystical? if it is something that helps you to make great discoveries. And the interesting thing is that the people who are in touch with the mystical among us mm -hmm. are often seen as mad. And many of them are, most of them are. <laughs> well, <laughs> But not all of them. But not all of them. We, we mentioned Niels Bohr and yeah. Newton <laughs> and Albert Einstein. So but that's where the conundrum is. How do you find the balance between the two? So. The point I'm trying to make, and you know, and this is what I feel, you know, if you ask me what I find most important thing today, like what makes me excited and enthusiastic and passionate, is this idea of balance. So, you know, um, Nietzsche had this book, wrote this book in the 19th century called The Birth of Tragedy. And he presented this theory, which I think is kind of very useful, of these two sides of a human. One that comes from God Apollo, and that's our left brain, so to speak, proverbial left brain. So it's everything has to do with, that has to do with logic and reason and analyzing, dissecting, conceptualizing. And the other side, which uh, comes from God Dionysus, Dionysus, and that's responsible for intuition, imagination, love. He, Dionysus was also god of, of wine. So it's also that side of a human that makes us sing and engage in, in uh, you know, revelry and, uh, um, and, and, and drink wine and spend time with friends and laugh and enjoy it, mm -hmm. you know? So Nietzsche advocated this point of view that those were two complementary sides of every human and as, as well as society. And the purpose of human life is to find balance between them. So math is both discovered and invented. We should be okay with having both ideas in our head and living exactly. in the balance. But more importantly, for me, Apollo, is like math and Dionysus is like love. So Dionysus and Apollo in, in, in modern version is love and math. 